My name is Dimitri. I am a software engineer and also a Python and C++ mentor. This is the first video in a series that I'm making on the topic of designing strict JSON config schemes in Python with Pydantic v2. Today we're going to discuss how people usually start having their applications configured with a JSON config, some of the drawbacks of the naive approach. Um, yeah, and uh, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. Um, so imagine you and I are setting up a startup. We're going to be providing a VPN service to the market. Um, any VPN service has to have an application, a VPN client, that is going to actually run on the machines of our users, like human users. Um, here on the left, I have a rough sketch of what that such application might look like. Um, yeah, so let's see. At the top, let's digest what we have here. At the very top, uh, there are some default values that I define. So default server and port, because every client application is going to connect to some server. Then I define a class VPN client. Um, that class doesn't really do much, but it has, so it accepts destination server and destination port, saves them for future use, and also prints what exactly are the values that it has received. And it also has a function do stuff that is supposed to do stuff uh, that this class will yeah, implement the functionality of that class. Uh, but we actually don't have it implemented because it's not relevant for what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, next, we have like a Python, uh, a classic Python trick to actually make sure that a piece of code only runs when you uh, run this uh, file as your main file and not just import this file from another Python file. Uh, this is very classic approach. Um, and in that piece of code, we instantiate the VPN client, passing along the default values that we have specified in the very top, and then we call the doStuff function. Seems pretty simple, and we can actually run that thing. So if we do, I've called it nodecfg.py. Um, it's going to tell us what exactly the VPN client has been instantiated with, which is destination server bettersoftware.com. That's just a random domain name. And destination port 4646, exactly how we wanted it to look like. Next, we continue our development cycle. We, at some point, realized that we would like to provide our users with a way to actually influence where their clients are going to be connecting. Um, so we think of a way to do that. Uh, so we, we're going to provide them with a config file where they can actually specify the server and the port to use. Uh, so I'm going to switch over to my second window in my Tmux. Here's a different piece of code on the left. Um, yeah, so there, uh, this piece of code actually implements reading the values that we have discussed earlier from a config file that we provide on the command line arguments. So here we have a function at the very top uh, that reads a file, so gets a file from the arguments of the, the from the command arguments of our program. Then we open that file and read it with the JSON library. So parse it as JSON and return a dictionary. Uh, we know that this is going to be a dictionary because we've designed it to be that way. Um, then we still have the default port because a lot of the protocols have default ports, let's say. You can change them, but there's basically generally going to be a default value for that port. The VPN client class is really the same. Um, the next bit of difference is in the sort of main piece, main function, you could say, where we, instead of just passing the default values, we read those values from the file passed along to us in the command line, and then we read the destination server and destination port from the resulting dictionary. Note, however, that the destination server has to be specified for this to work because we are using the square back brackets here. And here for the port, we use the get method. That is, if the port is not specified, it's going to return the default port, which is exactly what we want. So now to kind of showcase that this works as expected, we're going to run it. So I called it the Python dict, uh, sorry, dict config. And now we're going to pass it along a config 
JSON. So to, for the sake of clarity, uh, here's the config that I passed to it. So it has the destination port 1234 and the destination server bettersoftware.com. Um, yeah, that's a random domain name. Now, yeah, again, to run this thing, this is exactly what gets propagated into the VPN client, which is exactly what we wanted from this application so far. Uh, but now I, I would say that there are some issues that can arise from this approach that we have chosen. So let's showcase some of them. Um, first of all, imagine that you were to make uh, a slight mistake in the config file, well, an honest mistake and just a typo. So let's look at this bad config.json that I have here, which is basically the same thing, except for one small difference. In here, we have like a typo. So it's not a destination port anymore, it's destination port. Um, so we have this bad config, and now let's see what happens if we actually run our program with that bad config. You might actually guess what will happen, but yeah, so let's see. So the bettersoftware.com as a destination server is exactly correct. But for the destination port, we have a problem because this is not what the user was intending to specify, right? Uh, we can see that the destination port that has been propagated into the VPN client ended up being 4646, which is actually the default port value that we have in here. The reason for that is simple. That's just the way the code is written, right? Because uh, we have poked our config for destination port, the correct spelling, but our config that we have specified, or rather the user has specified here, did not have the correct spelling of that attribute. And so the Python, rightfully so, took the default port and just sticked it into here, uh, which is how we ended up with this 4646 passed along into the VPN client. So that showcases a, um, a problem with, that, with this approach, since we never actually enforce the certain structure upon the config, then if we make a slight mistake in that structure that can lead to uh, the unexpected consequences. As you can see, nothing in here would be able to tell us that something went wrong and the user would probably just run this, assume it went right, but then it would see that it can't connect because the port is actually incorrect, but they won't know it. So, and when they see that our application doesn't work and doesn't connect, they will probably just abandon it altogether, which is definitely not what we want. So in the next video, I'm gonna actually be showing how we can solve this with Pydantic. Stay tuned.